It's basically a matter of fairness. It's a matter of what's right. There's the right to protest, but not the right to cause chaos. Who's causing the chaos, President Biden? Because it sure as hell ain't the people protesting free Palestine. He just looks like he looks like a claymation. He, he just looks, looks like, like a, a little claymation figure. doll. Yeah. yeah, he's like a wax figure. <laughs> he's <laughs> like, I'm about, to, I'm about to lean into some conspiracy theories. Like, no, I think he's alive. Joe Biden, but, no, I think he's, I, no, I think he's alive, but I think that he is without question, um, especially when he has to go in front of a national TV audience. He's given some type of a cocktail, whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. Again, he's he is the leader of the free world. So whatever is the most advanced, you know, type of serum that could be given to get you to, you know, to get through, let's say, like an hour and a half State of the Union speech, then that's what you're going to get, uh, because we've seen him when he is coherent. And then we have obviously seen how bad it could be when he's incoherent. And when he's incoherent, it is really, really bad. But he's out there giving a speech that basically did Netanyahu write the text for him? I mean, that's kind of what you're wondering, but it's going to get worse. People have the right to get an education, the right to get a degree, the right to walk across the campus safely without fear of being attacked. But let's be clear about this as well. There should be no place on any campus, no place in America for anti-Semitism or threats of violence against Jewish students. You know what I think it is? I think that he definitely got his, you know, daily dose of methamphetamine cocktail, but it seems like he's in between facelifts. So, like, his eyes look like he's fighting for his life, but he actually, he didn't sound as bad as he can sound. And what was coming out of his mouth was just complete hot garbage. Um, that did sound like he was uh, taking notes directly from Benjamin Netanyahu, for sure. Um and this What's is the scary? reason why he's going to lose. I mean, at this point, he can't be surprised. I mean, I don't know what his advisors are telling him. I don't know what their strategies are. It's not working. Uh, I just find it hard to believe that he actually thinks he has a standing chance at this point. But again, like, he's not really with us. So, like, he, maybe he's maybe. not in a position to even care about, like, maybe he's not even sure that, you know, he's running a re-election campaign right now. Because, like, it seems like everything that you could do wrong in your re-election campaign, Joe Biden has done and exceeding has an exceeded expectations. It's uh, it's remarkable. And he can't even keep his eyes open, and this is what I try to explain to people. I'm like, it's it's like you could run dental floss across his eyes. That's how okay. it's, and again, it's it is a form of elder abuse. There's no question about it. It's one thing for him to have to get through this term. It's another thing entirely that you think that in his current state that he is capable of resembling any form of the leader of the free world until January 20th, 2029. That is so irresponsible. And... You know, when people try to chastise those that want to look in another direction, it's incredible how low they're willing to sink. And I think the Democratic Party, personally, I think they're losing an entire generation of voters. They may be losing two generations. Like this is getting this is getting very dangerous and all for one reason and one reason only. They had to stop Bernie Sanders. That's it. And Bernie was not willing to fight the way Trump was willing to fight. And that's why he didn't become president. Now, granted. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe, I thought democracy was on the ballot. And that's the reason yeah. why Joe Biden decided to run again for a second yeah. term. Come he's, on, man. he's fighting for democracy, man. Come on, man. Uh, look, what what would friend. we do without him? He's a, look, he's a good friend and he's doing the best job that he can. It's like, Bernie. God, can what you say the, oligarchy? Oligarchy. That's we good. Are not, That's good. We are, we are not a democracy. We've never been a democracy. I, I know. I, I'm from Brooklyn and I live in Vermont. I can tell you this is our country. This is what's happened. But that Bernie in 2016, 2015, mm -hmm. he was something. He was something special. 
Whatever happened, and I went to Philly for the convention in 2016. Something happened. Somebody got to him. I don't know what the hell it was. It could be something as simple as saying, yeah, you know that uh, that stuff that your wife is involved in with that college up in Vermont? Yeah, we're going to we're gonna make life very difficult for you if you don't start doing what we tell you to do. Or it could be something even more sinister than that. You never know. But I know that the Bernie Sanders that ran for president the first time, that was something very special. And there was something very special that was taken from us. And I do think the country may have been heading for a collision course with these types of circumstances no matter what. But I do think if Bernie did become the president in 2016, I think we would have gotten some things that would have helped this country a lot. Even though the system clearly has to break, um, and maybe this is just being accelerated at this point, I do think Bernie would have been what the country desperately needed in 2016. And we would have been better for it. And who knows where we'd be right now, because there's no question that he would be finishing out his second term right now as we speak. But this is what we're freaking stuck with. And now we're going to re- we're going to run it back again with Trump. And, and it's just, yeah, we're, we're in a very bad timeline. But let's finish it up. There is no place for hate speech or violence of any kind, whether it's anti-Semitism, Islamophobia or discrimination against Arab Americans or Palestinian Americans. It's simply wrong. There's no place for racism in America. It's all wrong. It's un-American. I understand people have strong feelings and deep convictions. In America, we respect the right and protect the right for them to express that. But it doesn't mean anything goes. It needs to be done without violence, without destruction, without hate, and within the law. You know, make no mistake. As president, I will always defend free speech, and I will always be just as strong in standing up for the rule of law. That's my responsibility to you, the American people, and my obligation to the Constitution. Thank you very much. I mean, is he, it, I have to remind myself that the things that he says are what he's being told to say. This isn't a question of whether this is what he's really thinking or is even capable of thinking at this point. Well, we know what he's thinking. He's said multiple times that he is a Zionist. So, and he's proud of it. Very yeah. proud of it. And so, that's the hypocrisy of Catholicism. Cuz he's and and he's Irish Catholic. He he's so he he is a hypocrite, but then again, how do you become the leader of the free world unless you're on, on that type of a level? Like well, I don't think to... that religion means anything to any president. I think they just say that to try to appeal to a group of people, usually who are squarely Republican, as part of like your overall profile as a presidential candidate. Are you a good man of faith? Would I want to get a beer with you? Those seem to be like some of the, you know main criteria that people use to determine whether or not they like a guy and will vote for him. Hey, look, I remember the same bullshit that was taking place when I was, you know, at the end of high school when, you know, everyone was saying, oh, I totally want to have a beer with Bush. It's like, this is the reason you want to vote for somebody. Like, I'm, I'm a teenager and I'm looking at this and just thinking, this doesn't make sense. Like, this is the, mm-hmm. this is the premium you put on voting for the person who's going to lead this country. Yeah, George Bush had a better personality than Al Gore, but that's what you're going to base your vote on? I mean, says who? Says who? Like, he was kind of painted as a cool guy, and then, like, the whole, would you want to have a beer with him? I'm pretty sure that was, like, a Fox News talking point that started to become normalized, I think, picked up by liberal mainstream media or, you know. CNN no, or MSNBC, I don't even know how they, you know, categorize well, themselves at this well, point. Well, of course, but the thing that always upset me the most about that circumstance and the fact that they always, they always say, you know, again, this is like the whole thing about everyone complaining, Trump doesn't accept the results of the election. You said he was a fraud president for four years. You said he didn't really win. You said it every day, all day, on every street, every place. What did you think was going to happen when he had the opportunity to throw it back at you? Did you think he was just going to sit on his hands and not do anything? Did you think the GOP was not going to do anything about it? George W. Bush was an illegitimate president. It was proven beyond any doubt that he and his people rigged the election in 2000 
specifically in the state of Florida. It was proven that he, when the recount was officially done in 2002, that Gore actually won the state, even in spite of all the bullshit that went on. Yeah, with Jeb, who removed how many black voters from the from the rolls, like made them unable to vote without their knowing. They show up to vote, and you, they found out that they were not they registered. Gave them that, that ballot, or whatever the the, the provisional ballot. Anytime somebody tells you you're going to get a provisional ballot record mm -hmm. it and send it all over social media because what they are doing is deliberately rigging an election. There are many ways to rig elections, many ways. Don't think it's just, they Butterfly totally balance. rigged it against me. I'm totally <laughs> persecuted. It's all, my, it's all their fault. I'm a totally persecuted guy. And it's like, again, when he does it, it's all about what is self-serving for him. Trump doesn't care about anybody but himself. And I think I would like to believe that most people can accept that reality. However, as bad as Trump can be, he is nothing compared to how bad this system is.